What's up fellow AI guys, Diga AI here and as we're starting off 2021, we just have to talk about something that has been brought up a lot lately. Especially now that more and more people are spending their time at home, creating, listening and using music in various projects. And that has to do with the successes in music generation, editing and production all done by artificial intelligence driven software. Now, typically when I see an AI topic being hyped, it's probably because some paper somewhere has been released, but this time it's different. It's driven by AI creations made by people all around the world. Or maybe it's just me, given that my hobbies lately included researching strange AI topics on the internet for videos and articles, and of course looking for non-existing train stations in Cyberpunk 2077. So maybe there is a small chance that I'm slowly starting to lose my mind. Now, I don't want to say that AI is going to automate the music industry in 21 completely, but it's definitely going to get a lot cheaper and easier for everyone to produce it using AI. Either way, now here is what has been happening with AI and music, how this affects you, and of course, how you can use this information to turn the like button into a starry way to heaven for the YouTube algorithm and make it turn blue. With that being said, let's start with automatic music generation using AI, a topic I'm never gonna give you up, never gonna let you down. While most musicians are probably now like, they took our job. the ideal way to train an AI to become a musician is currently unknown. The goal itself for us developers is also far from clear. Today we're going to look at three companies, their approaches to using AI for automatic music generation, and of course trying to answer the great question, when is the first data scientist gonna be given a Grammy. OpenAI's jukebox for futurists. OpenAI is one of those companies that has been founded by that dear loving rocket building car mechanic called Elon Musk. So fucking dead. <laughs> we are introducing jukebox, a neural net that generates music, including rudimentary singing as raw audio in a variety of genres and artist styles. OpenAI. The basic idea here is that they take raw audio and then encode it using so-called convolutional neural networks. So basically they're compressing a lot of variables into fewer variables. They do this since audio has roughly 40,000 variables per second and audio of course has many seconds. So once they've compressed these very complicated variable set down to around 350, they produce their sound in this smaller space, so to speak, on the fewer variables, just to elevate the complexity a little. In the end, they decompress it again up to the 40,000 seconds. So we are here on Jukebox. In comparison to the other two tools, this is pretty much a research tool, really. Really cool is, of course, their samples. So we have to keep in mind they're cherry picked, so this may not really resemble what exactly they're producing. However, you can see here uh, several examples and songs they've created in several different ways. You can just press the buttons and listen to them. Uh, here you have some explanation of their model and how it works. Um, here's some GIFs. It's quite good if you wanna know more about how it works and so on, please uh, feel free to check out their website explaining way better than I personally could ever do. One of the really cool things that they have here on their website is a T-SNE down projection. So really what that means is they're learning in a pretty big space with a lot of variables, but with this visualization, they're down projecting. So basically they're simplifying their model. And what you can see here is a bit of a um, unsupervised clustering of their different genres. So we have here R&B is quite far away from jazz. I don't know. But uh, what I feel, for example, soundtracks such as uh, epic mu movie soundtracks by Hans Zimmer are quite a bit away from soul. Pop obviously is in the middle. So finally, let's get to our first example. And it's of course one of our favorite songs. It's a song in the style of Rick Ashley. The this example has been generated by giving the AI 10 seconds, so the first 10 seconds on the, of the never gonna give you up song and then letting it generate the rest. So wait for 10 seconds, then the actual generation is gonna kick in. While 
this song has a lot of noise in it, it's clearly a step into the right exact. So there are more recent discoveries or there are more recent approaches have been doing with generating the sound directly from a MIDI file. You can imagine a MIDI file basically being some big music sheet that includes all the instruments and what pitches they are playing. As we can hear, this sounds already quite promising. I personally would love to make music exactly like this. So you just compose some tunes together and it just kind of renders it for you. The future with Jukebox could potentially be amazing. So let's see what they are bouncing out in the next year. Iva for creators. Iva is much like OpenAI's Jukebox, an approach to automatically generate music. However, the difference between the two is mostly how they treat their data structure. So basically the way they represent their data. While OpenAI is mostly working from their raw audio, Iva seems to be working pretty much exclusively on the MIDI file, so that music sheet we've been talking about earlier. Their approach is that we can upload such a MIDI file and they then take this as a base which influences their music or their generated music. So basically I can say, hey, generate me something in the style of Super Mario. So if I tell them that I like never gonna give you up and the Super Mario theme, they probably think I have a terrible taste in music, however, they will allow me to generate some music based on that influence. We are here on Iva. Iva is really one of the first tool that allows you to automatically generate music from like a bass track. The way this works here in the UI is that you pretty much upload a track. So you either choose from a track that you already know, for example, you could choose here Cyberpunk or you upload a song that you have on your computer. I already uploaded two songs, one being Super Mario 64 and the other one being no, Never Gonna Give You Up. Once you've done this, what you basically do is you generate a new track. This track is basically created based on the track that you uploaded. So basically I'm now generating a track uh, below 30 seconds for the song Never Gonna Give You Up. This year just pretty much means how many songs do you want to generate. I already did this here for you and we are later going to listen to them. Another cool thing that you can do is here you can actually edit them on their website. So let's listen to what they came up with for Super Mario. <laughs> shit i feel that was really close and i could absolutely see this in a super mario game when it comes to never gonna give you up sadly it's a bit of a different story i personally feel it sounds nothing at all like my favorite song Amper music for everyone. A completely different approach takes Amper music. Instead of somehow letting you control the generation process using musical tool, well, Amper music, they just generate it for you. They do so by using so-called descriptors. Descriptors are musical algorithms that play a specific style of music. One descriptor might be born to play punky New York rock and another might excel at chilled out beachside folk. Amper Music. Here we are on Amper Music. This is a really cool tool and personally my current favorite because I can actually use it and it's not too much of a hassle. So we are here on their home screen or their web app. What you pretty much do is you create a new project, let's call it AI, then we say next, uh, let's enter a number. You could either also upload a video or audio, but it basically just takes the length from that thing and generates your track in that length. So I'll take 30 seconds now. This means it will generate the track in that length using their decorators. And uh, for today, we're just going to go with documentary. So basically they let you select a series of adjectives that describes the composer. So we're just going to go with documentary because that's the closest to this channel, I guess, uh, futuristic. And I think we are playful, ain't we? Yeah, I think we'll be playful so much. You can now listen here to the different presets. I just like forks and knives because I eat with forks and knives. Do you too? Leave a comment if so. Once you've done this, basically here the generation process starts and in the end you'll have a lovely little song. Once you have generated your uh, song, you can find it here under tracks. We see that I've already generated a few uh, in the exactly same style just to speed the process up a bit. And yeah, I have to say they're all a bit different, but 
quite similar. So this is probably my biggest critique here. The result is excellent and I could see it being a great tune for a documentary about, for example, dog toys or something like this. When repeating the same selection of parameters, however, I feel the tune is quite repetitive. But then again, this is quite by design, so I wouldn't worry too much about it. I really like this website and I could in a few years use it for my own videos. Currently, I think their pricing model is a bit steep, but yeah. I would now have to pay $5 for this song, but I kind of have to feel for anything else. And this video, I currently wouldn't pay so much for a simple song. Yes, it's lovely. Yes, you can use it a lot. But then again, uh, on Fiverr, you can also get somebody to compose something like this. We have seen that computers can indeed produce music that would pass a simplified Turing test, which is quite great. I think all three solutions that we've presented today have their place in the music ecosystem. I always aim at musicians that want to be influenced by and create music with AI. While Ampere is more aimed at marketing specialists or video creators that are just looking to find a cool tune for their music video and that don't want to go through the hassles with composers or probably pay quite a lot of money. OpenAI's Jukebox, however, is a research project. If they ever gonna really succeed, I think they could really change the music industry and the way that we produce and listen to music. While it is potentially a great solution, currently we just have to see how far they can push the boundaries between AI and a real musician. And yeah, we'll see each other again in five years, I feel, and then we'll discuss whether they succeeded or not. So this has been with me for the week. I hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did so, please like and subscribe. It would help me and the YouTube algorithm out so much to recommend my videos to a brand new audience. And well, keep that wheel of history spinning. We'll see each other next week. It was a pleasure.